What it is, world, man. It is world's best host, yours truly, E.T. Definitely locked inside of the galaxy right now, man. Let me tell y'all something, bro. This interview that I'm getting ready to do today is um, it's going to be very, very interesting, right? Because I'm getting an education on an era of music that's not my era. But I'm a fan of the industry that I'm in. So the history of this music industry is very, very interesting to me. By my side... I have a, a beautiful woman. I would like to let herself introduce herself to the world. Let me know who I got in here. I am Donna Griffin, the of uh, the wife of the late Jean Griffin. The wife of the late Jean Griffin. Now, for those who do not know who Jean Griffin is, can you give me a small background on this man? He was a excuse me. He was a music mogul. He was a gangster. Yes. He was a father figure. He was. Deep into New Jack. And when you say New Jack, like the New Jack Swing, New Jack City, like that that era? New Jack Swing. Era. New Jack Swing era. Yes. And which is the era that Mr. Teddy Riley takes a lot of uh, claim for. Yes. Um, he, is he right in his claim? I, I mean, he, he, he's been the, he was like the face of it. Well, there's some truth to that. Okay. That truth would be that he was the, the man with the music, but... The developer, the architect, the the man that actually marketed and created and stamped New Jack was Gene Griffin. Okay. And a lot of things were being said because the Breakfast Club had an interview with uh, with Teddy not too long ago. And I, so I'm sitting there and um, Mike Morris hits me up and says, yo, um, a partner of mine, uh, Miss, Miss Griffin, wants to... Uh, talk to you and I, apparently Teddy Riley said some things that were false to the Breakfast Club and I was like okay I don't know what you're talking about so I had to like go back and look at the interview and try to figure out what was going on he, he was talking about sending money to the to the funeral of, of, of Mr. Griffin and stuff like that I don't know what was said all the way but apparently there were some things that he said that were not true would you like to correct what was not true? Yes I would go, very much so. Go, run it baby. First of all uh, this is an exclusive for you, E.T. Yes. Because I'm normally not doing this. Uh, you're the behind-the-scenes person. I'm the behind-the-scenes person. I don't come out in front. Right. I've been very, very quiet about a lot of stuff. Right. So now it's my time. That pissed me off. And what, what uh, specifically? He buried Gene Griffin. No, he did not. He attended the memorial service of Gene Griffin, but he did not bury Gene Griffin. Okay. So there was no money exchanged there. Right. So as far as him planning, burying, or being there, yes, he was there. Right. Not buried. He did not bury Gene Griffin. Okay. And and as far as the New Jack, the New Jack swing era, please describe this era to me because I have an older brother, so he knows it a lot better than I would. And and but there was a time a lot of artists came out of this era. So you had Teddy Riley, uh, Aaron Hall. You had Guy. Guy. You had Rex and Effect. Rex and Effect. Keep Sweat. Keep Sweat. You had Heavy D. Heavy D. You had Mo D. Okay. You had um, a lot. New Edition. New Edition. You had so many. You right. had Hammer. You had everybody. This was a music explosion because it was a fusion of music. Right. And it was uh, R&B to its uh and mixed with grit. rap and right. grit. R&B and, and hip hop mixed together yes, culture. Yes. It was the grit, it was the dance meets the lyrics. Exactly. And and uh, what role do you feel like your husband really played in this starting of this era? Do you feel he's the architect of the entire era? I feel like he's the architect of New Jack Swing. Okay. I be, I'm he had been in the music business long before I met him. He brought to you the DJ Save My Life, Rapscape Bounce, um, Kinky Fox, right. Kids at Work. He brought those things to you first. Then, years later, after he had been incarcerated and came back home, it was the New Jack Swing era. Okay. Okay. So, and he came so, back with that. Right. He came back with that. Um, actually, Michael, uh, Michael Cooper coined the name New Jack. So, from there, Gene branded the name right new jack new jack swing everything was new jack new jack new jack he pounded the industry with that music okay he kept on it he he marketed um the the sound uh from this country across the world netflix has a special out that's like the 90s era yes do you ever watch those no 
<laughs> with those kind of things when they pop up? Because they aren't true. They they really? tell so many stories. Um, they weren't there. I was there. Right. So they tell so many stories. People put, you know, put the hype in it. I did this. I did that. When that's not true. It always seems like, well, they, a lot of the time. So, for example, I, 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 I kind of coined it this way. You see a product, right? Right. Like, uh, let's say a, a, a soda company puts out a, a certain type of soda. They've normally been successful, but this particular soda, type of soda they put out doesn't sell well. It doesn't taste good, whatever the case may be. But you know why it disappears, right? And they take it off the shelf. Right. And and a lot of the times in the music industry, it, you're a product. You're an artist. You sing, you dance, you rap, whatever it is that you do. And something's pushing you, whatever company that is. Um, and then if it doesn't do well or whatever, or sometimes it does great, but it just disappears. But we don't know why. And it happens like that. So when they go back and they interview those people, a lot of the times it's the artist, but not the machine behind it. Right. And is that the issue that you probably have with specials like the 90s era stuff? I do. I do. And I feel like they pushed Gene to the back because he was a threat and he didn't just take things. Right. So, you know, there was um, with with GR Productions, there was there was actually a killing. Okay. There was fights all the time. Right. And uh, lots of betrayal and definitely lies. So, you know, I'm sitting in the middle of that and I'm watching this stuff go on. And now I'm starting to hear a lot about it because of the Bobby Brown story. Right. Um, and the talk, new edition story. And, and you get this kind of stuff going on because people were just in such shock that Bobby Brown was smashing uh, uh, um, Janet Jackson. Right. Yes. And it's like, OK, that but I, I, I get the hype of that because it's Janet and Janet was perceived to be this doll you didn't touch, I, I'm guessing, of that era. Right. Well, you know, the Jacksons was royalty okay. and untouchable, so there's probably a lot of things that was swept under the rug just like it was in GR. Right. So, you know, we keep that from the world. Right. Because oh, you're selling oh, the product. Or oh, we could then. Right. Because remember, there was no, no, social no, media. no social media, no cell phones. Right. You know, everything was done through news texts and and uh, newspapers and stuff like that. It, it just didn't come to you the way it does now. Right. Now, if you do something, it's on your cell phone. Right. People, Immediately. Right. And um, Teddy said some things about, like, him making a certain amount of money as a producer back then, like a hundred some thousand dollars per track. Is that any truth in that as oh, well? Oh my God, that really just sent me over the edge. <laughs> that sent me over the edge because the only one, mm-hmm. and the only one that I could say probably was making money like that was probably Michael Jackson. Okay. Okay. For his tracks and For stuff. For his tracks and stuff. Okay. You know, because he was that mega star. He was that star that could sell 28 million right. copies. Right. Okay. Not Teddy Riley. Not at that time. No. Right. So I don't know what he makes today, but back then, black artists didn't make that much money at all. Okay. okay? So what what he was given and stuff, all of that will be in my documentary that's coming out about Gene Griffin. Right. And you will be able to see the accounting and have an expert accounting on that particular uh, documentary telling you what it's all about. And th- uh, this is Ashanti Films is producing the documentary uh, and Antonio Moses is the director by the way for this documentary but uh, it's actually being recorded right now while we're doing this interview you guys uh, so it's a big deal right now but the the, uh, the other thing that I really wanted to ask you is how do you feel and I was shocked I asked you this off the air but I was kind of shocked to hear you say like you're with it how do you feel about the music industry and the way they make money now like the artists seem to be able to make their money you know is that something that you're for or you're like oh they just don't know how good they have it or well let me just say this i believe the platforms that they have now you as an artist can be your best if you sign with a company you sign with a uh like a american idol or something like that you sign your life away right with being an indie you can make all of your dollars and you can you say who you are they don't say who you are. Right. You market yourself. Right. So with that being said, you know what your sales are. You can see your clicks. You can see your hits. You can see your downloads. You can see who's streaming you. It's so much better than before in the 80s and the 90s. Miss Griffin, I feel like you have a lot of secrets about artists from back in the I day. I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do. Do you remember any, like, like uh, Okay, for example, like my older brother, right? 
I remember him t- saying a story about like Suge Knight hanging uh, uh, Vanilla Ice over the railing one time because he wouldn't sign with them. Like that was the story back then. Like he used to say that, oh man, Def, you know I messed with Death Row because da 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 because Suge Knight, you know, will hang you over the railing type of stuff. Did, did, did that happen a lot? That with happened. Artists? That happened. That happened. That actually happened. That happened quite a bit. Um, let me just say this. Um, we were basically ex- an extension from the streets. Okay. That's what music is mostly about. Right. And is because everything starts in the streets. Right. So if you're, if you're at the pulse of the streets, you know what's happening. You know what to say. Rappers who rap, they know their lyrics. They know how they'll come at you. What I would all, I, not, not to cut you off, I apologize. No, but, no problem. But I... I I always like to tell people it's uh, say uh, you, you you don't find jewels outside of the dirt. No, you do not. So, so you know most time most times you are getting an artist, and as long as that artist is scuffling, you can get the best material out of them. Right. Once they get in the cushy life, then their music changes. If you notice, and then you know you don't have that raw, you don't have that 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 inspired them anymore. And they got to go out and find it. And they got to go out get and writers find it and get writers. And that's okay, so that's yes. sometimes the 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 um the bad side of opulence, you know what I'm saying, of right. getting to that money and getting to that fame and stuff like that. What do you hope to come out of this documentary? The truth. The, the just, truth. I have been sitting at home. I've been a very peaceful and very quiet person. Right. So I haven't said anything. I've sat back. I've I've heard different things. People would call me with different things. I just t- sort of ignored it. But now that it's coming to light, and that last interview, oh my Teddy, God, Teddy, you you you, you, oh, you. <laughs> I can't I can't wait for you guys to hear the story of Gene Griffin. Okay, and and this, do you know when it's going to be coming out? Do you have a date for this documentary? We're looking at probably around the first of the new year. So okay. right 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 in January twenty nineteen. Do you do you feel the um the industry right now is in a better place than it was? No. I feel that they've lost their A and R departments. I feel like um they streamlined so much, they've taken away um all of the development, period. Yeah, there's no development. So there's, no there's no development. There's no development. You get developed on the TV show now. So that's how you get developed. Right. Right? So, and you end up looking stupid and no well, one wants to buy it. Well, you, you end up having a following. Right. But for what reasons is the thing? Well, you sign your life away to them, first of all. Right. So that's your career. And so I believe that when you get on a platform and you can go for it for yourself, you have your own destiny in your own hands wow. and my husband used to say all the time you're worth only what you think you're worth so if you want to take a job take a job but did, if you want to be in the music industry you get down in the dirt and get it did gene steal money from Ty- teddy no and I, I asked that question just because um a lot of artists are always claiming those type of things. Okay, so a lot of artists always claim stuff like that. Right. When 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 they win, they're the winners. Right. When you lose, you're the you you're the cause of it. Right. And so you know, today, if you had the kind of money that Teddy Riley has had over the years, and have don't have that now, you a loser. Did dude. he spend a lot back then? Oh God, did he spend a lot? <laughs> oh God, did he spend a lot? How do I know? Yeah, yeah. How do you know? Oh, how do I know? I know because I paid the bills. I wrote the checks. I know where what the money went. I know. I have that document. I have those documents with me today for this very reason. Wow. Judgments, so she she keeps everything. the receipts, bro. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I, I you know what though. I'm um. I know this is probably very difficult for you just because, one, it's about your husband. Yes, it is. Um, and to talk about anything personal within a family household uh, for a woman or a man that's, you know, about their the, their their partner is not easy. So I appreciate the time. And then also, um, when it's from an era that was so, I feel like it was just so gritty. You know what I'm saying? Before you got to see the shine, I know it's probably really difficult because you had to be gangster. You couldn't afford to just be nice or you would get taken or you get taken or you get taken right and and taken for real by somebody else that can bully you into 
you know, signing that contract, like the they said with to what you with Bell and, Bell yes, and Ice. Yes. Um so you know what? I believe a little of that and know nothing about it for real, but I know what my husband did right. and how he did you know Are you got, gonna actually talk about something in the doc in I'm the doc? I'm gonna talk about it all. Really? I'm gonna talk about the drugs. I'm gonna talk about the the money. I'm gonna talk about who was sexing who. Who sexing who? Oh my back god! Then. Oh, I can't tell you. Come on, man! Give me one. Give me one good wait, story. Wait for the you, documentary. You can give me one good story. One good story. One good story about someone that's oh two people god. that were super well, famous me, that we did not know about. Did, let, did you know about Bobby Brown and, and Janet Jackson? No, you did not know about that. No. So what about who? who did but you we know had about? we had we had some young ladies that come that came out to our company and actually. Um, they're in a great position today, but they were on in living color and they were dancers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they was doing all kinds of stuff back then. So, you know, when, when, when you are around people, you, I, I was just shocked. I was just shocked at, at seeing very pretty girls uh -huh. come out in droves, you know, doing the most the craziest. most craziest thing. And when you see them as stars shows, now, you're like, wow, I remember when you did this uh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I was one of the people who developed stars, mm -hmm. I it takes a team to develop somebody. Right. You it can't is, build a pyramid by yourself. It is never I. So those narcissistic people who always say I, I, me, 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 mm -hmm. it takes a whole team to build one person's career. It, it's everything. Right. It's everything. It's the music. It's what you see. It's the it's the brand. It's everything. So when you talk about music business, right. I'm I'm with you on the music business. Right. All that other um, fairy tale stuff that people like to just build up character. Oh, I'm this and I'm that and speaking those quiet voices and stuff like that. <laughs> I just tell you that that is just Bull. misconception. Okay. No, bullshit. Right. <laughs> How about that? Okay. So no, that's that's just some some personalities that people what, take on. The, I guess my last question would be this to you: Was the documentary planned before you seen the interview? Yes. So this was coming out anyway. This was going to but come did, out. But in Teddy Rye's interview with the Breakfast Club just fueled this fire. Well, you know, actually, I started to, I have had many people over the years come and ask me about the stories. I've had movie companies come and ask me about the story. Yes. And I've kind of kept quiet about it because, you know, there are certain things that, you know, okay, so do you want to go tell your lies? Go tell your lies. As long as I know who did what and, right. how, and how it happened, I was good with that. But now you back, you talk, you, everybody's talking, right. I'm going to talk too. From, I'm telling you. From the truth. From the truth. Now, do you uh, uh, fear any backlash from those people? I mean, you're from an era now where they, you know, that kind of talk. I'm Jean Griffin's wife. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I'm Jean Griffin's wife. Okay. Gangster. And, well, no, he would just say, ain't no punk in me. Right. How about that? I understand. Ain't no punk in me. I'm not going to take up so, any more of your time. Do you, and the documentary is scheduled for what What time? You know? January 2019. Okay. Coming to you. I also have a website set up. Okay. Um, www.genegriffindocumentary.com. Okay. Okay. You guys check out for that, man. I appreciate your time, and I, I so thank you for this interview. Oh, thank you for having me. This is a big deal. Yes, You it guys is. keep thank it locked, you. man, with your boy E.T. Locked inside of the galaxy, man. Don't beat me up. And don't look at my stripper pole over there. <laughs> I see that. <laughs>